Work continues on the Plymouth Duster, this time up at Volunteer Muffler and Performance in Cookville. The giveaway ends December 4th, and as you can see, I've still got a lot of work to do. We got some paint to shoot. We got graphics to put on. We got tires and wheels. Plus, I need to update you on a bunch of work that's already been done up here. The dash is gonna be rebuilt. We've got a bigger rear end as well, and there's a lot more to it, so let's get started. So some of you might be scratching your brain maker right now. Why is the car sitting up at Volunteer? Well, they were kind enough to squeeze me into their busy schedule while I was down in Florida racing the Crown Vicks because we decided to go ahead and upgrade that little seven and a quarter rear to a big beefy eight and three quarter plus gears, positive traction and all of that stuff. And I gotta be honest, this is one of the busiest shops I've ever seen and I'm just extremely thankful they slid me into their schedule. Now, normally I would say, you know, go check out their YouTube or something, but they don't have one. But you guys can still help me. If you go over to Google, search them up, Volunteer Muffler and Performance Cookville, leave them a five-star review for me, would you? Just tell them they're awesome. They saved our bacon. Plus, you guys have seen their work a lot. I mean, Ramp Truck, Packard, Blue Chevelle, Grand National, Charlotte, Crew Cap, everything I own, basically, and they do awesome work, and I just appreciate them squeezing this in because I am running out of time. So let's start there. Let me update you. We'll walk around the rig, see what they got accomplished. Then we got to get it on the ground and start doing some paint prep because we're going to be doing some of that. So one of the biggest, you know, last second changes, because that's how we do things, addressing this rear end had a tiny little seven and a quarter in it. And listen, could it have held up? Maybe. I mean, we've put a thousand plus horsepower through a 10 bolt and absolutely thrashed that thing. I'm willing to take the risk but I don't want to pass that risk on to someone else. Whoever wins this thing, I want them to feel comfortable and confident in its ability. So we've got an eight and three quarter in here now. It's narrowed up. It's got 11 inch cop brakes on it. Spring perches were modified to fit. It's quite a bit of work actually. And we're putting another chunk in it. The other rear end had like a 240 something extreme highway gear in it. This car, is gonna be a different animal because we're putting a 355 in it and a posi traction, all brand new. It's gonna be set up with seals and everything like that, painted and you name it. Speaking of paint, underneath the car, it's all cleaned up now, rubber coated, looks way, way better. We also got all new bushings in here. I did the one, but we got all of them done now. All new steering components, so all that should be good. And then the TV cables all installed. That's ready to rip. And as soon as we get it down, I'll show you the dash. That's pretty much brand new. No, it's refurbed with some new parts, however. Now I lowered this car to this perfect height because we're gonna start doing some paint prep on this thing. But don't get too excited. I'm not meaning that we're gonna actually paint paint the car and change the color. I don't know what the winner of this car is gonna wanna do. If they're gonna do a full restoration, if they're just gonna drive the thing and thrash it, which is what I would do. So I don't wanna to go too far or do too much just to have someone undo it. So here's the plan. We're gonna clean this up as best as we can and we're gonna clear coat it. I've got some graphics we're gonna put on this. I think you guys are really gonna like those. And I'm gonna go ahead and matte black the hood. And I know it's not a wedge or whatever other made up term Mopar has for things that require the matte black hood. I just like the look and I think it's gonna give this car a lot of attitude because remember, we're trying to do like a 70s throwback retro build on this and I think that's gonna give us a little flair. But before we do that, we gotta do some sanding actually on this. I don't think Brillo pads or SOS pads is gonna be enough to get this thing ready for clear. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as you guys have seen, overall the body isn't terrible on this car. I mean, the worst of it is, you know, a couple dents here, a couple dents here, like something fell on it or something like that. But it's pretty darn near rust free. The whole rig, which is great. But it's had a pretty terrible repaint at some point. And it's hard to see this, guys, but it's like a very thick 
orange peely well it was done at home somewhere which is fine but they didn't bother sanding it or anything look at this and all of this stuff is going to pop once we put clear coat on this so i want to try to get at least some of this mount everest stuff knocked down and we're going to do that with 400 grit and a da and then we're going to go over the rest of it with some sos pads or scotch bright pads which i've already kind of started on the bottoms and then we got to power wash this thing soap it up clean it up and then start taping it off also there are some runs big big runs all over this car so some of that stuff we want to knock down too otherwise it looks like we did all the runs and uh, we might buff this thing out once we get it cleared we'll see how bad it looks i guess hopefully it just looks amazing and then when we add some graphics on this hopefully that's where the eye is going to go and then of course the hood as well well unfortunately this just got a lot more difficult doing some testing with 400 grit here the paint that's on here no primer was even used and it's really thin probably one coat there's the original paint and primer and that was just a quick barely touched it we probably don't want spots like that everywhere so I'm gonna have to be super super gentle and only touch it where I think it really really needs it and unfortunately it's gonna be pretty rough I might try to get these strips out but a little bit of that okay. Fox Tino look might not be bad we know it ain't straight as a laser anywho so here's a good example there's a big old run coming down this and uh, got that out without burning through it successfully but I want to see what this is going to look like before we get carried away so I'm going to take some water and see I don't really like the way that looks so we might be in trouble here I'm going to have to figure out either go to an 800 grit sandpaper or not do nothing because we don't want this to look like a cheetah well I came back with some gray yeah, they make gray. And it leveled it out a lot better, but you can see how much cleaner and smoother. I mean, the car is filthy. It does need to be washed, but it's, it's a lot smoother surface. I don't think I can do the whole car. That's gonna be risky. I do need to get this flaked paint leveled out. Nothing we could do about that, so I'm gonna have to blend that in. And then I'll probably get the sail panels, because the guy's eye is always shoot down here, especially on these dusters with these beautiful quarter panels and the swoop in here. So I'm gonna focus on these areas on both sides and probably the right where I'm working on the other side and then we'll clean it, wash it, see what it looks like then, make a decision if we're gonna do anything else. Got the hood back on for now, that'll be coming off in a minute. Just protecting the engine. Interior gutted well i think i've got a conceit over here uh, it's just making a mess and basically wasting a bunch of time even the scotch bright is going through this stuff and it's so rough it's just gonna have to be what it is so we're just gonna get it outside scotch bright this thing down with some heavy duty cleaner and hope that this stuff doesn't look terrible under clear probably but it's going to be better than just this dull ten bundy look get some shine on it like this and then like i say the graphics we're putting on this should really make a pop got the line from the gold duster i'll leave that that's fine might try to clear clean this stuff up anything that's flaking try to get all of that out as well cold start I'm letting Donnie drive it he's sitting on the floor <laughs> Oh, 
Wow, it sounds so good. And of course it's raining outside. Perfect. Save some money on the water bill. Nope. Unlikely. Brought the uh, pressure washer from home and I just got a gallon jug of cheap, I think it's like tile floor cleaner actually. It's from the Hardmore store. Gonna soak it down with that. Scotch bright this thing. Get it as clean as I can. Was gonna let it sit outside and dry but I guess we'll have to bring it inside and uh, let it dry in here. We got a wood burning stove in here going, so it's starting to finally warm up. Winter has hit us. It's supposed to be pretty cold here in the next couple days. Down to like 20s, I heard, up here in Cookville, so. Perfect time to be spraying some stuff. Well, Chad and Donnie helped me scrub this thing down. We started with gray, but it ended up with maroon in some places, and we were just scrubbing the paint off of this thing. So we didn't want to go too hard on it, but it did clean up nice, nicer than I thought, I guess. A lot of that slime and stuff that was on the roof is gone, but you can see where we started getting right through it, so we had to be a little careful. Kind of gives you an idea of what it may look like with clear coat on it while it's still wet. We're gonna throw some logs in the stove here, start heating this place up, get this thing dried off. Then I can start taping and things of that nature until that happens. I might try to pop this grill out, some of the trim, things like that so I don't have to paint it, get the wipers off, things of that nature. Looks like we just got some screws here and then Along the bottom, there's tabs, basically. So I just gotta bend over far enough to see them, but I'm lazy. So we'll just pretend we know where all those are for now. And then a couple screws up here. So I think just a bunch of Phillips head stuff. This one's busted, but I got something for this. A new grill. We're gonna get rid of this thing. It doesn't look good. Probably could rattle can it, but this tab is busted and this flops around. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace this anyway. So let's get it out of the way before we start taping and spraying clear. Got the front end all ripped off here. Doesn't look like this has ever been wrecked up front. Everything seems to be fine, it's all the seams and everything like that is true and straight latch looks good all of that so now all i have to do is just tape off the headlights we should be fine while it's down on the hooves i'm going to show you the interior here remember how bad this dash was the old gold dash it was just absolutely destroyed there was nothing left of it well, check out this one it's now black and perfect and the dash has been painted to match I uh, got this and a bunch of other stuff from Classic Industries. That's where I got the grill. We got some other interior parts and things like this, but we are gonna go ahead and go black. And we've got some seats getting worked up right now. Those won't be back in time here in the next day or two, but we'll eventually get to that. I wanted to show you guys this. And then we've got a new vintage USA gauge panel coming as well. That's gonna finish off this and make it look really nice. I think I'll go ahead and pop these out and pop these out. And I think all a guy's got to do is just take them speed nuts off. There's 74,000 on this unit here and then just two on the sides. And then uh, we should be good to go. Cute little trunk mat. Almost completish in here, but not quite. We need to grab all these leaves and stuff out of here so when we start painting it's not blowing all that stuff around. Now we don't have to tape any of this garbly gook up and we can get in here and clean it up a little bit more with some scotch Bright, use some Windex. 
and then all we got to do is bumpers really door handles and of course the glass so before a guy hand wipes this gonna go around with some wind here and there's water in a lot of hidden places we want to get out now like this around the wiper and the seal before you start taping everything up because when you hit this with air with your gun you're going to be surprised and streak water across everything not that this is a perfect platform to do an awesome paint job on but like i've said before in the past it's good to have repetition and just practice how to do it more correctorist writer way than not so i'm gonna take my time work my way around and then we'll go ahead and come back and wipe this thing off with some wax and grease remover or earth ghost juice or whatever we can find and then start taping my favorite nope least got some lint free rags here and uh, what is this wax and grease remover by master pros Well, I think we're ready to start taping my favorite part. Now you guys know me, normally I just use quick quarters or magazines or junk mail or bills you don't want to pay to do glass and stuff like that. But it takes a lot of time and a whole lot of tape. And then I saw the guys using this down in Texas when I painted uh, Demolition Ranch's El Camino. And I was surprised to find out how affordable this stuff is and it's pre-taped plastic. You just tape it on, pull the plastic down, tape up the bottom, and that's really it and it works great for an apron if you're into that stuff bumpers so i thought i ordered three different sizes i guess i just got this one big one but we'll use this as much as we can because it's going to be a whole lot faster got to think about the amount of time a guy saves with this stuff too even if you only pay yourself minimum wage or whatnot if i could figure out how to use it there we go I think maybe you're supposed to rip it before you start, but <laughs> not me. Well, a guy did figure it out. You just roll out what you need, take a razor blade, <laughs> that easy. Stuff is handy. There we go. Ocean Raceworks just dropped off their 1,000 horsepower, 632 cubic inch OBS shop truck. This thing is incredible. Guys are going to be doing a one of a kind. It's going to be an insane exhaust system is all I can say. If you guys want to see some of that stuff, let me know. You might see some more of this truck here in the future jammed in some lights so I can see on this side it's kind of dark in here I think we got nope spoke too soon got to get the headlights covered up but I think that is pretty much it gonna wipe this thing down again and then we can start mixing up some clear going to be using the vice grip garage clear coat you can wipe this stuff on but I'm just gonna spray it on it's just a lot faster and we can use an El Cheapo hobo freight gun and just blast it out quick gonna stock up the stove maybe wet the floor down no nope, probably not should blow dust and dirt out of here not doing that either and then we'll spray this thing let it dry tonight in the 20 degree weather which is also wrong and then hopefully tomorrow this will be set up enough to go ahead and do the graphics and all that other stuff got the paint mixed up here everything a guy needs comes in the kit just follow the instructions stir it up and then guns so this is the one you guys have seen me use this a bajillion times this is their cheap one 
as you can tell. It's got a 1.4 tip on it. It's great for primers and base coats and sealers, but I've used it for clear successfully. If you're on a tight budget, this will work just fine. For reasons of science, I'm gonna try their Spectrum gun. This one's $100. It does not come with the regulator, and it only comes with a 1.7 tip, which is traditionally better for clear and top coats. Uh, it does have a lot better feel and action than this one, so I could tell, I mean, just the handle alone, you know, seemed to be a better quality. So we're gonna put this one away. We're gonna try this one, give it a shot. You guys have seen me use this one a bunch. Almost ready to spray here. I'm gonna blow the car off one more time because we're using a wood burning stove and there's ash and all sorts of stuff floating through the air. Dump in a cup, uh, get my spray pattern figured out. I don't know, I'll spray the side of the forklift or something. And then we'll just dig right in, see what happens. Well, I think we're all ready to rock. Even though this is a huge shop with vent fans, gonna go ahead and wear a mask. As I get older, paint fumes really get to a guy. Then we got a really cool dryer water separator thing zip tied to the trash can over there. We're gonna pretend that we drained the tank in the air compressor. No, didn't do that. Let's hit it. Let's crank some rock and roll, do the thing. Seems to do it pretty well, actually. I got a nice wide fan on it. Yeah, not bad for 99 bucks. Another guy's body works runs. The last paint job looks terrible, but hey, it's shiny. Okay, we're gonna let this flash off. Come back and do our second coat. Take a look at it. Maybe do a third. Don't know. Golly, she is shiny. It's hard to even explain it or show it. Again, we're not worried about the hood because that's going matte black. Now we just have to sit and wait for all this to dry. I'll be back in the morning, let this dry, or should I say freeze overnight. Do have a couple runs that I'm gonna fix. I'll show you guys how to do that, super easy process. Then we've got decals to do, we have gotta finish that hood, and we still have tires and wheels, reassemble the front end, ton of work to do. So that's gonna do it for tonight though. We'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early. Well, good morning. Yeah. Duster kind of dried overnight. And I started some repairs here, but we've got pretty big repair to do on the other side. You know, I got some runs. I have to say, everybody, I got to hustle because I got a guy coming to help put these graphics on. I could probably figure out how to put them on. I've done some stuff like that in the past. In fact, I've done a set on a duster. I just really don't want to wrinkle up these graphics because I don't have another set. I just want them on as straight as possible. So this side's pretty well done but I've got to hustle and get the other side done. You can see I've got a buffer wheel out. I had a bad run over here, but I've already fixed that. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. Over here on the door, so we're gonna have graphics running along here. I got some bad runs. It's like an opera house. Curtains just hanging. 
but we'll be able to whip this out pretty good. Now all this other stuff, that's all the other guys paint that we've buried. We're really not gonna be able to do much about that. Man, this thing is shiny. But I wanna get this fixed and we can maybe stay ahead of the guy if he shows up while I'm working. He could start on the other side, but what we're gonna do, these bulbs here, you can actually take a really sharp razor blade, a fresh one, and just cut them right off. And that's gonna save a lot of labor and time and sandpaper. Then we're gonna come in with 800 grit on a DA and just very gently work these down. Then we're gonna to go to 2000 grit and then we're gonna compound it. And we should be able to get all this stuff out. It's gonna look a lot worse before it gets better and I'll show you what I mean. Nice and easy, level with the paint, boom. Dropped it on the ground. I think a lot of guys are shy to try to paint stuff because what happens if you get a drip? It's really not the end of the world. And it happens to professionals all the time. And they make materials out there to correct it. So don't worry about it, give it a shot. You know what I mean? There we go. I'm gonna keep working at these. Get them knocked down as much as I can. And again, it's just gonna save us time and sandpaper when we start this. Like I said, it's looking worse. It's gonna look a lot worse once we start sanding. It's gonna accentuate all this, but we'll get her. So now I'm gonna wheel my chair over. We'll start with 800 grit. See, now you can clearly see my mistake. Wow, this is one of the worst <laughs> runs I've ever done. But we're gonna take this 800 and just gently work it in. We gotta be really careful because we can eat through this in a hurry. So I'm gonna keep feeling. See all the high and low right there? And just try to knock it down. Well, this is gonna be good enough with the 800. Now, good enough in our scenario is a lot different than real life. And again, I'm not a body guy. We're just making stuff happen. You can still see a lot of low spots in here. That's why it's that dark gold color versus where I've sanded. But I don't want this to be perfect because none of this is perfect, right? It, it looks orange peely because of the paint underneath. It's actually very slick. But if I go crazy over here, this is gonna look like a mirror and it's not gonna match the car as a whole. So I'm gonna stop here I'm gonna switch sanders. We're gonna to go to 2000 and smooth all this out here. This guy's a different pad. It's a hook and loop pad where that's a sticky back. And that's so we can get this thing wet. And uh, a lot of people use like soapy water and stuff like that, which is fine. But your floors get, by the time you do a car, your floor is just soaking wet. I actually just like to use some good old spray away because wherever I put it, it stays. It's gonna clean, lubricate it, do everything like that. I'm gonna move this around nice and slow. Oh, I gotta oil this this morning. Come on. Well, anyway, gotta go oil this tool, but basically gonna cover the same area and feather it out. So when we polish this again, we want to try to blend it in as much as possible, but not make it look super obvious. There we go. Those runs are gone. Obviously, we got to come back and polish this. Uh, I'm going to hit it just a little bit more with the wet sand, and then uh, we'll get to polishing here in a second. Just using this El Cheapo rotary and uh, some rubbing compound from 3M. Just gonna work it back and forth. Gotta be careful with this too. This is a compound, so we can also bite through clear coat with this. This is the lightest foam pad I could find though to hopefully navigate that from happening, but we'll see. Bam! Just like that, that big old drip is gone. Car's looking good. 
Donnie's in there working on the uh, steering column. We're gonna sand that and paint that up black as well so it matches the dash and everything like that. But. So Josh from Rap GFX is here. He's gonna be doing the vinyl down the side right here. Got them laid out. We're gonna go matte black. So this should look pretty nice. It's just getting her cleaned up. He'll set them up dry so we can take a look at them and make any adjustments if we need to, and then he'll do his thing and make them permanent, huh? Yep. I'm uh, working over here, just cleaning this up for him. Uh, just hand, hand sanding right now. Then I'll run the polisher down this side where the stripe is going because obviously we won't, we won't be getting under that anytime soon. And then he'll be able to come over on this side and do his thing. Donnie's got the column completely rebuilt. Nope, tss, tss. but looks way better. While he's working away on this, guy's gonna get the hood off and get this sanded and we gotta get some color on this. We got some pretty big wallops, which means we're not gonna fix them. I'll just put heavier paint there. And again, we're just doing only the hood, not the tops of the fenders or anything like that. I'm sure that's incorrect in 15 different ways for Mopar life, but there's just a look I'm going for here. So I think I'm gonna grab Chad, have him help me get this hood off quick. Throw it up on the seesaws and get to Santa. First glimpse. Boy, that's gonna look really good. <laughs> He's the one that did the vinyl on the Trans Am for Roadworthy Rescues, and it turned out really good. And it's just crazy, even though the body isn't perfect, you put something like that on there, and it just really livens her up. Hood's coming along pretty good here. Not trying to make this perfect because obviously the car isn't. There are a couple dents here and there. Uh, I'm just gonna leave them. Just trying to get it smooth anyway. Uh, it's kind of hard to see this stuff here. I'm trying to get rid of that. But it's coming along. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and paint the underside but I'm not gonna prep that like this. We're just changing the color basically. So the stripe is done and my gosh, did it change the look of this car. Wow. Yep. And of course, we had to go with 318 because of our little 318, but also <laughs> LS 318. Kind of makes the black wheels look good, but I got something else in mind for that. Donnie's working hard on the gauge cluster. And that's what this is going to look like. Just a beautiful set. That will actually have water, oil pressure, volts, decent tack, fuel gauge, everything right there in one. So our guy's got the underside of the hood cleaned as well. Just a little bit of elbow grease and brake clean. Good enough for a color change. We're gonna be using this uh, hot rod flat. It's just a single stage acrylic urethane paint. It's super cheap. I actually just did a Again, that Trans Am I was talking about a minute ago that he did the uh, vinyl on, and it turned out great. It's a little bit tricky to paint to not get stripes in it, but it covered really well and it went down pretty good. So just gonna use this stuff, gonna fog the bottom, let it get just dry enough, and then we're gonna flip it over, prep the top once again, and then go ahead and lay this down. I don't know how long this is gonna have to dry before we can handle it and put it on the car, but. The faster this gets drying, the faster we can get it on, obviously. So I want to get this done pretty quick. All right, let's throw some color down. Bottom side of the hood.
Well, the last piece, top of the hood, going to get this sprayed down. We just stoked up the old wood burner over here, get as warm as we can in here and let this dry overnight. First thing in the morning, we could throw this back on and see what it looks like complete with the graphics and the flat black hood. And the last thing we got to do is tires and wheels. Compressor's dropping water. First coat down, gonna let this flash, setting a timer. Probably just do two coats. I don't know. Well, while we're waiting for the hood to dry, we'll get this grill situation taken care of. So this is that old one again, cracked down here and a tab was busted off. And here's the new one I got. Beautiful. This is from Classic Industries as well. This piece here you reuse, screws right on the top. So we'll go ahead. I wish I would have got new gaskets and lenses. I didn't. I'll put it on my list though. We'll put the old ones in for now. So we'll go ahead and pop this new grill in. That should change the front quite a bit. That is much better. Donnie just got the gauges in. Wow. Those look really good. Yeah. Really, really good. So whoever gets this, starting off at zero miles, and uh, motor, I think had 400, something like that, so pretty much that's legit for the build. That's pretty cool. So, just gotta tuck up the column, and we gotta get a wheel for this. And I'm not sure which I'm gonna do yet. Depends on the door panels, I guess. But Good job, man, looks great. Thank you. So this is Austin from Paragon. He's the uh, scientist behind this here rig. And he stopped over to check in on it and he came with gifts. We needed an air cleaner, of course. Check this thing out. That is really cool. Solid chunk of aluminum. And that puppy's gonna go on something like that. Donnie can figure it out. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, she's all dialed up. So not only a one-off engine, you get one-off valve covers, one-off air cleaner, whole nine yards. There you go. Might have to do something with that hose. That's awesome. Thanks, man. That's really cool. Of course. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. Here we are again, day three or whatever it is. We're so close to buttoning up this thing. As far as the visual transformation goes on the exterior, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the hood on right now, and then we're gonna jack this thing up and get some tires and wheels on it. And it's gonna once again change the look of this car. I don't think I got too many stripes in this. See what it does. Oh man. Oh, I gotta come down in this back. 
Back? Okay. Got to go down a little bit. All right. You loosen it, I'll push the hood up. There you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that looks awesome. This hood will flatten out yet, get it out in the sun a little bit. Uh, that shine will go down and eventually look a lot like the, the stripe here. But man, it's looking good. Some of you are probably really liking these black steel wheels, but I got something even better. All right, get these old Cooper Cobbers off. These got a lot of tread left. Like I've said in the past, but they're all weather cracked and stuff like that. These hubcaps went on vanishing paint. You know, cop car stuff. All right. Now, before we put new tire and wheel on here, we're gonna completely rebuild the front end. And of course, that starts with a good wire wheeling. Yep, mm-hmm. Rebuilding, rebuilding. You wanna breathe this in as much as possible. There we go. And then, new bearings, new, new seal, brand new hard brake hardware, new shoes, rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. It's looking pretty good. Oh yeah. Go back here. There we go. New upper control arm bushings. Perfect. Well, fellers and fellas, if we want that classic 70s look, there's only one way to go. The OG Krager. I actually had a very hard time finding these in the correct size, width, and offset for this particular vehicle, but I think it's going to be worth it. I don't think we've ever done Kragers on the channel ever that I can remember. So this is a lot of fun actually. These are 235 60 15s. Did go up to 15. Some of you thought maybe we should stay with the 14, but here's my thought on it. Whoever wins this might want to put disc brakes up front or something like that or change something up here. Let's give them a little bit more room with the 15, but we're still going to have the big and littles. Wait till we get to the rear. Oh yeah, that's gonna look really good. Now this rear back here was tricky because again, we changed axles, went to this eight and three quarter. We got the big 11 inch brakes back here. All this is gonna be new bearings, seals, gears, deposit, I mean, 100% new. But the backing plates moved, obviously, because these would be wider originally. So everything's been shortened, narrowed, everything like that. And then I wanted to get the tire away from the leaf spring a little bit from the previous setup, but also make sure that we're not interfering with the fender well and get the wide of tire as possible. So it was a lot of straight edge and tape measure and add and subtraction and division and multiplication and avoided algebra and then subtracted a few more things. And then I drew a couple like smiley faces and Christmas trees. But anyway, this is what I came up with. Again, was a 275 60 15. 
but all the magic is in the offset on the wheel, and I can't remember what that was. So hopefully, <laughs> yep, we are good. Oh man, this looks great. Well, this car has gone through an incredible transformation in just a few days, basically right out of Rusty Acres to the 70s looking muscle car, and it has the sound to back it up as well. But we're not done. We still have to tackle the interior, and we're not just gonna throw some truck stop blankets over the seats this time. We're getting some real upholstery and gonna snazz up the interior quite a bit. This is gonna be a full on go on the town rig. And speaking of which, just a reminder, we're giving this car away. For a shot to win this thing, all you gotta do is go to vicegripgarage.com. Every $5 you spend gets you one entry for a chance to win this beautiful duster. And that ends December 4th, so you guys are running out of time. We'll see you very soon. We've gotta finish up this duster. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate you very much. We're off to the alignment shop.